Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to another session of Postiles webinar. Today we have another different topic uh, and we have a very uh, passionate wildlife photographer, macro photographer uh, and a deep sky photographer who loves to expose the tiny little world around us, around us to everyone through his reverse ma macro photography method. So today we are having a session with uh, Mr. Kiran and uh, his works have been published on both uh, Nikon India and uh, Nikon Asia's uh, websites and social medias. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Kiran with us. Hi Kiran. Hello Hermes, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So yeah. we are starting the session, right? Yes, welcome to the session, first of all. Yeah, thank you for uh, the invite. Yeah, you can you can uh, tell our audience a small background of, about yourself and how you <laughs> came into wildlife or macro or even astrophotography. Okay, then we will we'll go try. through your presentations. Okay, so starting with, I am from Kerala, Bolson country, uh, filled with uh, uh, trees, bushes and everything. It's it's densely populated with uh, forest and all. So obviously the wildlife and uh, all subject and beings here are uh, very diverse. And I have been into uh, photography, uh, not only uh, macro, wildlife and uh, astro and all. I have been uh, doing this since I think 2011 or 2012. So how I started this was my interest into photography only came after I got a digital camera. To be honest, uh, I was not passionate about uh, nature or other things until I got a camera with me. So I started on a semi SLR uh, camera and uh, gradually I moved on to Nikon D3100. And that's when I started to explore and uh, its benefits and all how much that uh, basic camera can make out the results and all so i i very i am passionate uh, i am very passionate to uh, explore the abilities of a basic camera okay. i mm -hmm. i'm not a high end gear person i want the and i want people to know that uh, even on a basic camera you can create results that are out of the world Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into macro photography and uh, in macro photography, I'm not doing the macro with uh, a dedicated macro lens. I'm just using a 1855 mm lens uh, with help of a reverse mount. I am doing the reverse macro photography in which the budget for this photography is very limited. I mean, you only need like uh, 2,000 or 3,000 rupees to get into this reverse macro photography setup. Obviously, it has some drawbacks and all, but uh, okay. when seeing the results, these drawbacks can uh, stand back. So that's about uh, reverse macro photography and uh, about me. I'm not a, a full-time wildlife or macro photographer. I'm okay. working also. I'm working a corporate mm -hmm. job right now. And uh, maybe, but in future, I have plans to make this full time. So, okay. yeah, that's about me. That's great. Yeah. So now let's go through your photos and. Yeah, sure. Oh, <coughs> my screen yeah. is live, right? Yes, yes. <coughs> okay, so. First of all, we'll go through. This will be the setup. Uh, you can see the setup, right? Yeah. So basically, it's uh, mounting a normal 1855mm lens in the reverse way, in the opposite direction to the camera with help of a small uh, ring, which is... Uh, I'll show it. Is, it. is it possible to make it full screen? Yeah, okay. Is it visible now? 
go to the view and do that okay screen mode right yeah yeah okay this will be the setup uh, okay. when you mount the lens uh, after using this uh, reverse mount and all yeah and okay then so i will be showing some of my photos which has been clicked on this kind of setup okay which is yeah this is uh, actually this is not a spider it says just the skin of a huntsman spider which it left after removing oh. its skin it left it there you can find it around uh, plants and all it will be hanging it is very lightweight and all so that's mm -hmm. why its eyes and all are uh, very shiny diamond like so it okay. indicates that it's a skin of that uh, spider yeah and then this is a this is not a single photo this is actually a combination of five or six photos which means uh, in each photo i focus on different parts of the subject uh, for example uh, i'll show so here you can see yeah the screen mm. is visible right yes 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 okay. so in this first image i have yeah. focused on the uh, eye part, the compound eye part of the dragonfly. Right? Okay. And yeah. in the second image, I have moved the focusing to back back side of just the back side of that uh, dragonfly size. So I am gradually progressing with the focusing front to okay. back. So okay. in each and every single photo, I am focusing on different area of the subject. So mm -hmm. going through, you can see the area has been different now it's the hair part and mouth part is in focus and then in the next photo and gradually moving on you can see now the leg of the spider is in focus and so progressing in that way i have clicked 14 images in which uh, each image represent each area of the subject okay and all together all of these photos i will uh, combine hmm. i will combine using i'm um, currently using this software to combine all these images what is that software called this software is called a uh, helicon focus okay or else you can also use photoshop for this purpose this is a okay. paid paid one i am using oh. a trial for time being okay so you just have to Put up the all these photos that you have taken mm -hmm. and then uh, you can choose any method which you want and uh, according to results you can choose the final image because in okay. three process it is done in different way the stacking is done in different way so okay. i'll show an example if i stack on method a it is yeah. going on stacking back to front it is stacked and yeah this is the final result the final okay, result okay. i have opened up here yeah so you can see oh, every yeah. part of this subject is in focus now correct so why we need to stack is that while while doing reverse macro mm -hmm. the problem is that there is no electronic contact between your uh, camera and lens because you have yes. reversed the lens Yes. So the, all the electronic contact is behind your lens. So yeah, it, it is technically disconnected from the camera. So camera doesn't know that there is a lens attached. So okay. all the process like uh, aperture control and uh, focusing doesn't work automatically. Okay. Okay. So we have to manually do it. So, so how do you set the aperture? Yeah. So to manually do it, uh, you are able to see my yeah, yeah my yeah. live video yes you yes. can see me right yeah okay so yeah so this is an 1855 lens right okay so and uh, the reverse ring this is a reverse ring and okay. you can see 
the one part of the reverse ring it is mm-hmm. a, just like a filter thread just like you attach a filter to your lens it just goes on like it just threads on to the lens just okay. like the second yeah okay so now the front part of the lens is attached to one side of the reverse ring yeah and the other part is just like you mount a lens there is a red dot on it yes that's where you are ah uh. yeah it just goes on with your camera okay. you can just mount it accordingly okay and then you have to click it so it's it's now done okay the setup is now yeah, done yeah 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 so in nikon the problem yeah. is that your aperture your f will be shown as uh, zero zero uh, yeah yeah as because there is no electronic contact between the lens and the camera yes so in all nikon lenses every nikon lenses there is a flap behind the lens yes which controls the aperture this yes. is a mechan yeah so you can see yeah what's happening inside it, it just opens it's open yeah, yeah. and closes yeah okay so this is how you have to control the aperture this is oh. how you li- lively control the aperture while you are shooting okay okay so that's how you do it for nikon yeah. cameras but okay. canon cameras uh, it have some more difficulty because it has uh, electronic aperture okay so it have different methodology which is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is some more complex but i have been i have uh, already updated it in my website how okay. to do it and all mm-hmm. in nikon it's pretty easy to control it okay so in that case uh, we have to control the focusing and aperture uh, manually okay and we are doing reverse macro so we have some uh, uh, limits on this yeah. that is we cannot open the aperture fully okay at time even if you up, open the aperture manually even if you up, uh, open the aperture i mean narrow yeah. down the aperture you won't yeah. be able to get all of the subject in single frame okay it's not possible okay because the lens is reversed so yeah. that's when you need to stack hmm because you will only get a small small areas to focus so mm-hmm. we will have to make this uh, take advantage of that and uh, capture every small areas of this uh, subject hmm. and then you need to stack all these images okay also one problem that you, you will encounter while doing is that in all of these 14 images the subject needs to be still there it needs okay. to it it cannot move because if it moves our stacking will be disrupted okay so you can see in all these images it the subject and the prey it yeah. is almost still it has in yeah. moved a, a bit mm 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 I actually had to take like uh, 240 plus images to get just this 14 images. Oh, okay. So, so because it was lively, it was lively catching this uh, dragonfly, and the dragonfly was almost alive. Okay. It was in its last moments, so that it was flapping its wings, it was trying to move around. Mm-hmm. So I was not able to capture it properly. Okay. This was the initial starting of this. Uh, capture the jumping okay. spider when it hopped on to this dragonfly yeah this is how it started okay so this is so actually did you, did the, you use uh, a uh, tripod for this no i actually i never use a tripod for reverse macro photography because uh, i find myself very comfortable with my own hands because uh, the tripod and all is not very friendly i mean you okay. cannot go into the bushes or any mobile places with a tripod yeah. Yeah. you cannot adjust it because even before you start adjusting your tripod for all these things the okay. subject may be gone okay it may be gone so i always uh, use my elbows and uh, body parts to uh, lean somewhere if there is okay. any something a subject or something near to me yeah i will yeah. try to grab a hold of that and uh, take advantage of that to be stable okay and okay so yeah 
yeah these are all some of my uh, live okay live predator images uh -huh. uh, this is a jumping spider with a house fly kill okay uh, this is also a shell out of that okay. the same scenario That's against the sun uh, yeah it's actually against the sun it's a okay. reverse macro but and it's also against the sun yeah okay also yeah mm. this is the best part of a reverse macro because uh, these all these little tiny creatures won't we won't notice it at all it's mm. actually a, a plant and uh, these all are aphids aphids means okay. uh, these things uh, suck out the nutrients and everything from the plant and destroy the plant yeah and also for protection for their own protection they create something they excrete something called uh, something sweet so okay. that ants are attracted to that thing uh. so ants act as a, a protector for these okay. aphids so it's a, a mutualism yeah yeah. It's kind of a mutualism. The ant protects them, and in turn, they give this uh, mm -hmm. sweet thing. Okay. So these moments and all, it's uh, we never notice it, but we can actually see it on plants and all. But only if we are very keen enough, then you will be able to see this. <clears throat> and uh, 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 this picture also, uh, like, is it a stacked one or? No, this is a single shot. Single. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So not every picture you need to stack. No, not every picture you need to stack because only if you have to go to the extreme macro level, then you will need the stacking. Okay. Uh, I mean, you you get really close to the subject, then only you will need the stacking process. Otherwise, uh, you will be fine. Yeah, got it. And. This is a picture of two robber flies mating. It's their genitals. So I got okay. a little more closer to get the details. Okay, okay. So one drawback of the reverse macro is that I try to capture all of this. This is one single robber fly. And the other one was also there. They were mating. But uh, in reverse macro, I can't go beyond a limit. I can zoom out beyond a limit. So, okay. so I cannot get two of these big flies in a single frame. It's not oh, possible. Okay. okay. So at that time, it's a very big withdrawal because the mating scene and all, I'm, I was not able to capture. I could only uh, uh, go into extreme macro level. Oh. So these are some uh, drawbacks to this uh, reverse macro method. But... Yeah. Uh, if you are comparing to a macro lens, a dedicated macro lens, if you have a budget, then you can go for a macro lens because uh, your work would be easier because okay. you don't have to control the aperture manually, you don't have to control the focusing manually, or you don't have to be very steady and all. You mm -hmm. can almost do it perfectly. Mm. In reverse macro, if you don't have a budget for a macro lens, then only you can choose uh, reverse macro. But the results will be good. Uh, okay. I want people to know that uh, you can't take pictures like this on 1855. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a very small insect, actually. This is only like less than 2.5 centimeters. Okay. And this is its compound eye, mm -hmm. its face. And this is a stack of like uh, four or five images. Okay. Yeah. So, some moments which I captured also. And this one was a challenging image actually. This is a hover fly mm -hmm. in flight, on flight. Okay. So, trying reverse macro itself is a difficult task to be honest. But, uh, if you are uh, dedicated enough and if you are passionate enough, you can do wonders actually. So mm -hmm. I try to advance a level more and try to take this shot of a fly on air using this reverse macro method. And yeah, this is the result. Great. Yeah.
actually only after starting reverse macro method and uh, dedicated my time into reverse macro i mm -hmm. knew that all these things are happening <laughs> okay so so much uh, predators are there around us all yeah. all being very small we never notice it Mm -hmm. And I haven't gone anywhere to shoot all these things. It was all taken from my backyard only. I oh, never travel. Nice. Yeah, I never traveled anywhere to do reverse macro or macro photography. Okay. It's all from my backyard only. So then only I know uh, there is a lot of things around us. Yeah, only, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so. Yeah, this is a very extreme close-up of a mosquito. Oh. Yeah. So you can see it's compound eye and all. Yes, yes. It's stinger and every hairs on it, it's visible. Hmm. So that much detail it can give the reverse macro method. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this one was uh, oh. I try yeah I tried to uh, water spray on a house fly yeah. that was friendly enough to not fly away while okay. I was spraying and also I only spray it like a, from one or two feet above it so that it oh. doesn't know the, uh, it's coming it's not a sudden yeah, yeah, process yeah. it's like very natural very slow process so that it doesn't matter. Then I try to click the picture. I try to click before also, but what happens is that when these water droplets come onto its uh, compound eye places, it knows. So it uh, uses its hands and wipe it off. Mm. It's a very fast process. It just wipe it off and uh, it's completely clean. And when I try to capture, then there is no water droplets. So I have to take many times. But it was good enough to sit for me, pose for me, actually. <clears throat> yeah, then here. It is. Uh, what do you think? What the, who who this guy is? This one, the black one. A spider mm. and what do you think? I thought it's initially. I thought it's an ant. Yeah, actually, yeah. Everyone thinks it's an ant, but it's a ant mimicking spider. Actually, oh. it it goes like an ant, as the name suggests. Uh, it's it behaves like an ant, but uh, in that way it predates it's easier okay. for them to predate it's actually a spider you can see uh -huh. its eyes and all yeah, yeah and yeah. It, and even it uses its uh, friend this uh, arms and all just like a and it will mimic yes and it will even go with other ants that they don't even uh, know that this is a spider <laughs> so 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 that's how cunning and <laughs> okay yeah this is an mimic spider with a pre uh, prey and it's mm. very easier for them to get the prey even yeah. there is orange colored ones and we don't even <laughs> know if it is a spider or uh, if it's an ant because it is very it very much looks like an ant and be behaves like an ant okay and even at times when uh, they don't get any prey they yeah. will go with the ants and uh, they will eat the ants itself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a group of aphids. I took oh. a very extreme level and there is hundreds of aphids in it. Oof. All little, little, little aphids are on a single, very small stem of a plant. Okay. So, what this does is that we can't really see this. We don't notice this, but uh, it completely, when it's on the plant, it completely destroys the plant. Mm. So one thing when you can easily notice on the plant is that you can see ants. As I said, ants are yeah. mutually related to them. So 
they will be there if you see ants on this uh, stem and all you can yeah surely say that there are aphids on it so that's when you take okay. a precaution to save the plant mm -hmm. and yeah here is a web spider the normal web spider with its egg sac these all are single single eggs okay and when you zoom in you can even see the leg of these babies oh. just hatched ones yeah yeah so yeah right so these all are single single eggs and uh, they are coming out hatching out mm -hmm. and i was only actually some photos only after yeah. taking i see all these details <laughs> only while processing yeah very very true because <laughs> yeah. I only was planning to capture this spider, but uh, this was a. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I only after processing then knew that uh, this is egg sac yeah. and all. Yeah, you come to know about the bonus you got. Yeah, it was actually a <laughs> bonus. This one also, I was only capturing the spider, but uh, I don't know. Uh, this mm. also came up with uh, hundreds of egg sac. Mm. so all these tiny detail and all we we miss it i just this one do you can you guess what this is maybe anything you know it's macro of something but uh can you <laughs> guess what this is <laughs> okay I'll is say, it dragonfly yeah. or something no this is actually the larvae of uh, mosquito <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's a part of some dragonfly or something. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a the thing we see inside the uh, dirty water and all, nah. It, yeah. Uh, the dance, dancing thing. That's the. Yes. This is the guy. Yeah, it didn't went perfect, but uh, it's okay. I tried to catch it because if we take it out of the water, it will die. Mm, I never okay. capture uh, dead or uh, that kind of things. I don't capture. I only capture live subjects. Mm -hmm. So I took it uh, in when it's it it is inside the clear water itself. I took the photo from outside. Okay. So how much extreme you can go on a reverse macro lens? I will show you. Yeah. Uh, this is a tea dust. I mean, yeah. The tea dust that we use it. Yes. 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 Tea. This yes. is the macro of that. So this is the extreme yes. level we can go for on this. <laughs> yeah, this all single are single single grains of tea <laughs> dust. So this is the extreme level we can go on a reverse macro. So to show this, I captured this. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And this one, this one was uh, published on Nikon Asia uh, on okay. their uh, Instagram page. Okay. And then another one was this one, this curious little guy. Oh. This one was also captured. Yeah. Actually, they are very curious that you can even see the flash that I'm using in its <laughs> eye. <laughs> yeah. They, they are very curious about uh, if they are looking into the camera and you are there focusing on it. For like okay. more than 10 seconds, it will be inside ah. your lens for sure. <laughs> it will it can see its own reflection on the lens part. So it will obviously it will jump inside. That's another problem of reverse macro because you are you are reversing the lens and the other part of the lens is open. So anything yeah. can get into it. So you <laughs> must be very careful while dealing while capturing these jumping spiders. They are very curious. It will be all of a sudden. Uh, mm. We will be looking through the viewfinder, and in a minute, in a second, it's gone. We never knew it, where it went. <laughs> and this is something that I captured. This is tiny little world. I saw this smiley kind of thing. It's just like two eyes and someone smiling, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On its shell. So I. Actually, this was also a bonus. I just captured it and I then uh, zoom into the camera. Then only I saw there is a kind of smiley thing on its back. Yeah. 
this is also an extreme uh, level of macro of a jumping spider. You can mm -hmm. see every strands of its hairs and all. This is not a stacked one, this is a single shot because it was in very cooperative. I just uh, could only take a very few images. So we, we have a question from uh, Manchnada. Do you also use external flash with this technique to capture this? Yes, actually, I was going to say about that. Uh, you can see me, right? Yeah, yeah. OK. This is my flash setup, actually. This is a okay. Digitech DFL046 model flash. It's a very basic one. Yeah. That with a softbox. A softbox okay. which I purchased from Amazon for like only 200 or 300 rupees. Okay. You can get two of them for 200 or 300 rupees. That's the only okay. setup. Okay. So this one goes with the camera like this. And yeah, this is my setup for reverse macro. Hmm, okay. Actually, this is my setup. Yeah. So I kept this diffuser in this way because otherwise the light will be hitting on the top of the lens and it will create the shadow. Okay. Our subject will be only here. There yeah. will be only this much distance. So if the light hits on the top of the lens, it will create shadow. Okay. So I don't want that. So I kept a diffuser like this so that the light will be equally distributed and the light will be soft. And this works for me best. Okay. This, this is the one I'm using. Yeah. This is my main source of light because in reverse macro, uh, the problem is that you don't, you need to pump up the ISO. Without an external flash, you will need to pump up the ISO to like uh, maybe 2000 and above, which will mm -hmm. introduce so much noise in your image. So you okay. really don't need that. So yeah, it's always best to use the uh, external flash with a diffuser so that you can, as a, when we are using a narrow aperture, you know that it uh, takes out the light in the image. Mm -hmm. You need to sacrifice the light yeah. if you are going uh, steps and steps more on aperture. So if you want to get more area of the subject in focus, you will have to narrow down the aperture. Mm -hmm. Like in this camera, I if I pull it, then it will be wide aperture. And if I slowly release it, to the end it's narrow aperture so in okay. this narrow aperture without a flash it's impossible to get anything it will be completely dark hmm. so to compensate that uh, light loss you will need to get an external flash for best results okay you can you can try with the uh, inbuilt flash and all inbuilt flash you can build your own diffusers your own ideas and all but still i would say the inbuilt flash is not powerful enough to uh make your iso to iso 100 or 200 because okay. while i'm using this external flash uh, i only need to get my iso to iso maximum of 200 i oh. need not go uh, need to go above that okay no. so external flash is very recommended for this purpose So yeah, my screen is visible, right? Yes, yes. So this is a close-up of a millipede. Okay. And this A1 is a plant hopper. We don't see this much. It's like, it's not much seen around us. A plant hopper and it's a baby of it nymph it's a plant okay. hopper nymph that's why it has these kind of uh, structures on its back yeah it was actually very nice to see so that, that i captured it mm -hmm. so this is a eye of an uh, forest lizard a small kind oh. of lizard but uh, its eyes like this. 
Hmm. Just like a almost similar to eyes of a viper snake. Mm-hmm. Like vertical eyelashes. Yeah. Uh, this one also was an experimental shot. This is eggs of an ant. Okay. So I just experimented with my reverse macro technique. How close I can get and this was it, yeah. And here, actually, you can see a story in here. This mm-hmm. is like a series. The yeah. ant, ant comes on, and this is a tree hopper. Okay. And it looks on the tree hopper, and then it gradually, uh, it's kind of a domination. It takes mm-hmm. over, and then after that, there is a small fight, and... Uh, the tree hopper fails and the ants take away that tree hopper. Okay. It it happened in a, like a, on, in a single minute itself. So I was able to capture this whole thing. Great. So a lot of things happen actually around us, but uh, only when we uh, see through these uh, things, then see through this macro photography, we will be able to know. So I saw this uh, mm-hmm. ant carrying a dragonfly and moving. OK. It, it's not a, such a great shot, but uh, I, I wanted it to be clicked because I haven't seen something like this uh-huh. ant carrying. A, I have heard that ants can carry 100 or 1,000 times their weight, but it was actually yeah cool to capture this one. Mm. Yes, this is the guy I was talking about. This is a and mimicking spider oh, itself. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is the orange one. This is the okay. orange guy. So these are the only things with its eye, this kind of eye, glossy eye, we can understand that only by this we can understand this. This is a and mimicking spider. And I think mm. in female and male, there is it is some things are different because you can see there is a big elongated thing in front of it. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm not sure about that, but maybe in female and male, that's the different. That's the difference. Okay. And this is a green garden Lisa. Actually, I like how its skin texture is. In actually, it creates. It has very much details. So much details. It's a mm. it's a sing, single shot, and I loved its uh, texture on skin and all, so that's why I captured it, and I captured its skin texture differently too. Okay, actually very nice to see its skin texture. Yeah, and then yeah, all things happen around us, like this yeah. house flies mating. And this one is a caterpillar of uh, some kind of moth. And okay. It's very, it, it was very different from other caterpillars. I haven't seen this much stones and everything on any other caterpillar. Mm-hmm. It was very, very, very different. Just like a coronavirus and all. I, okay. It looks okay. like one. <laughs> and, Talking about caterpillars, there is one more like, yeah. This is also a caterpillar of a uh, blue tiger moth hawk. Yeah. Yeah. So, every tiny detail of it can be captured. Mm. Everything. Yeah, right. And this was a small kind of fungus on a plant, which I tried to capture on this reverse macro. Okay. Actually, I thought initially I thought it was some kind of eggs, some something 
laying their eggs and all uh and many people gave me many people told me that maybe it, it is some kind of egg and all but later it was said that it is just a kind of mold or a fungus something like that okay yeah so is there any questions coming up uh, or a- uh, so far yeah people have asked the questions in between so which i already asked you yeah okay so apart from this uh, reverse macro technique and all uh, yeah the other interest in photography for me is that uh, deep sky okay so this is a orion nebula orion constellation yeah. in which this is orion nebula and uh, this is flame nebula which is in yellow color to the left okay uh, this is a hole's head nebula which is merely visible Mm-hmm. uh and actually this pictures uh, this picture was uh, taken with this same d5600 nikon camera with okay. 7300 mm lens and a mm-hmm. tripod that, that's all nothing else okay so i want uh, really want people to know that even with basic things it is possible to capture yeah 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 this is the core of our home galaxy which is known as milky way yeah this is the center part of it and the rose color in which you see here is the lagoon nebula okay which is hundred and thousands of light years away from us mm-hmm. so we are technically we are looking at something which is which is in the past oh oh yeah uh manjnath is asking he want to know about the settings in the external flash while doing settings. reverse lens yeah yeah okay for settings uh always me personally i use a iso of uh, 200 okay with i cannot go above 1 by 200 shutter speed because my flash is a basic one it's yeah. not a high speed sync flash so mm. i cannot go above 1 by 200 so okay. i choose i choose that shutter speed yeah and uh, you know the aperture and all is always uh, controlled uh, with my fingertips and uh, focusing it's always done fro- front to back there yeah. is no other mode of focusing mm. no auto focus or anything so that's my settings but it may differ if you are using a different flash and the flash power that i use is o- always on the middle because okay. when you go to the top end and uh, fire a shot what yeah. happens is that it takes a bit like 2 uh, or 3 seconds to reload okay so it gets busy because it was a high power flash that was fired so it needs like 1 or 2 second uh, gap to regain its strength yeah so it's always better to keep it in half strength flash and then okay. adjust a bit in iso you can go up to 400 or 500 iso no problem yeah uh, don't let your flash go to the maximum level because uh, if you are taking photos <coughs> for st- stacking and all uh, when you take one single shot and then you will have to wait for like 2 or 3 second for next shot because yes. otherwise the flash won't fire so it's better to use the half the strength of the flash and then adjust the rest on iso so that you can keep on clicking and go yeah you can proceed without uh, any lag mm mm-hmm. yeah and uh, rakesh sharma is asking what do you use for uh, stabilization stabilization actually for stabilizing uh, nothing else i it's completely dependent upon my elbows actually i don't use any monopod or tripod as you know uh, getting a tripod and all is very messy into this uh, bushes into ground level and everything is very messy i feel much difficult if i am using a tripod i have never tried but mm-hmm. if i am 
using a tripod it's very messy so okay. always if you if you have something to your sides i mean wall or uh, if it the subject is in a ground level then you can either lay down or uh, put your use your both elbows as a uh, tripod and then capture it you can okay. stabilize it properly okay and also when, when you are you when you are shooting in a uh, sand stones or anything like that you can always use some kind of pad fittings on your elbow so that your elbows won't hurt mm -hmm. so that would be better and uh, maybe a small kind of if anything any monopod and all uh, maybe only of this much uh, length and all which is extendable yeah is available from the market that may work for you because maybe you will get some stabilization but all, oh. all these angles and all you know the subject is mostly the insects and all so okay. they either fly away or move when you get really close to it so okay if you have something like tripod or monopod with you it will be very hard to adjust according to each and every moment of them it will be hard to adjust okay. Okay. so it's always better to go with the hands itself and yeah. if you can lean lean on to something that would be better to stable stabilize yourself yeah okay great yes that's all the questions we have yeah okay Rakesh Sharma attended your class. Pardon? Uh, uh, I think your voice uh, break right now. I said the uh, the person who asked this question, uh, Rakesh Sharma, he attended one of your class. He's saying. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe in yeah. any uh, before live session he has attended. Yeah. At some public school. Public school. You uh, and Sanjay were really pioneers in the field of macro photography. Now, I think <laughs> they are uh, my friends itself. Uh -huh, okay, okay. Us, so leave it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So if there is any questions, you can uh, come Yeah, below. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the questions we had and uh, Kiran, it was a very interesting session with a yeah. lot of new knowledge. Uh, okay. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. And uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this session. A lot of people have, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have benefited. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe see you soon in the field or with some other presentation yeah sure Hermes. yeah yeah okay 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 then so thank you so much wind up the session yeah okay. yeah we can yeah okay bye Hermes. Yeah. bye yeah. so that was uh kiran uh and his experiments with uh reverse macro photography i i think most of you have uh, benefited out of this session and our next session is uh, yeah next week we will have one more session on wildlife photography uh, after that we again have uh, another session on october uh, may 30 31st 30th or 31st yeah two more sessions we have this month thank you so much for attending and take care. See you. Bye.